All right, welcome to a question where the question is fairly comprehensive, okay? And the question is asking me, what is the vertical force, vertical is basically this, as you know, required to hold the diverging elbow in place, diverging elbow. What it means is there's an elbow with 60 degree angle to it, and the out outlet is diverging or the area is getting larger as a result. And it tells me that, hey, go ahead and neglect the weight of the foot in the elbow, all right? And looking at the uh, what is given to me, the velocity one, area one, and pressure one, it seems I'm okay with section one. But section two is missing some information. We may need to refer back to this. Okay. And by the way, this is uh, water. Uh, that's how I gave the numbers as. All right. Um, okay. In a real exam, when you see, you're going to have access to the reference manual. And what I recommend is looking at page 186 and there's a section called pipe bends well that's exactly what it is enlargements and contractions right enlargement so this is this fits me well and what they did is they draw this like that for you okay and this is the inlet and this is the exit okay this is like that and they give this alpha as this and there is they give the coordinate axis as x this way and y that way. This question is testing me is in, on the for, force on the y direction. So I go ahead and kind of look at my um, equation on the second screen in the real exam. Here is what it reads. I'm just copy pasting what I see over there. All right. So the q times rho times v2 times sine of alpha. So. In these type of questions, my recommendation is to assess what I know, what I don't know, so I can act accordingly, right? What about Fy? Do I know that? Well, that's being asked to me, so you know. What about W? Well, I said, don't worry about the weight of the fluid in the elbow in the question statement. What about P2? Let's take a look. Well, that's missing right there. P2 is a question mark. I don't know that. A2, given in the question. Sine of alpha, let's discuss that for a minute. The way that this question is written, alpha is like this, right? Um, but looking at the way that is defined, what is my alpha? There's two answers, but both are the same. You can call this minus 60 if you want, and you can call this 300. Obviously, they are the same points, so it doesn't matter. Sine and cosine will be identical for these two points, right? So now I know, I know this, Q. Q will be, as you will see momentarily, it will be V1A1, which I know already, so that's fine. Density is known. Uh-huh. VT is missing too, right? I don't see the V2 right there. Okay, so it seems, in a short uh, summary, I'm missing two things that I need to answer my question. So that's what I said is comprehensive, all right? So in this type of cases, my recommendation is to be systematic and always start with finding the velocity from the continuity equation. Right? Why? You might ask. The answer is, well, this PT equation, which is the Bernoulli's equation, has velocity 2 in it as well. So if you go out and use the Bernoulli's equation to find P2, you will not be able to find a number. You will be finding two unknowns in one equation. So that may discourage you um, during the examination. So keep it simple. Find your V2, plug on over here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave some space because I'm going to come back to here to solve this question. So look at the uh, reference manual. I have this information for constant density cases. Okay. So in my question, my V1 was given to me as 1 meter per second. And A1 was given as 1 meter square. So was that nice enough to give you not the diameter but the area? That makes it easier. V2 is what I don't know. And the area 2 was 2 meters square. I'll put that, let's double check that. I don't want to make, it, make a mistake. Yeah, that seems right. So from here, I'm going to get myself V2 as 0 0.5 or half meter per second. So far, so good. So I was able to accomplish finding this 0 0.5. Wonderful. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, so let's write the Bernoulli's equation. P1 over rho plus V1 squared over 2 plus GZ1 will be equal to P2 over rho plus v2 squared over 2 plus gz2. Okay, fine. Let's assess this situation over here. The first thing I want to talk about is the z, elevation changes. Well, if you were given the distance from here to the center of this 
from basically from the center of this pipe to the center of this pipe, you can include that in your analysis. But in this case, I wasn't given the height difference, right? So I will simply go ahead and neglect that. So that, that part is out. Then the rest will be in. So P1, which is 3000. Please note that the SI units of uh, pressure is not kilo pascals. It is pascals, right? Something to note. Density is 1000 kilogram per meter cube, right? Um, plus, see, this is what I mean, the confusion kilo, right? But if you write this is equal to MA divided by area, kilo, kilograms will cancel, FYI. Plus, V1 square, V1 is 1 over 2 equal to P2 over 1000 plus V2. V2 is 0 0.5. It's right up there in the blue font. Divided by 2. Okay. So let me do what I can. This is 3, right? So that even I can do it. This is what? 1 squared over 2 is 0 0.5. I'm doing fairly well so far. So this is 0 0.25 divided by 2125, right? And so from here, I will get myself the P2 to be 3,375 after multiplying by 1,000 pascals, okay? So it's 3.375 kilopascals, but I don't want to convert to kilopascals because this is what you're going to insert into the equation. Then what I do, Fy, W was gone, P2. P2 was 3,375. A2, that is 2. Sine of either minus 60 or 300, whatever you want to write, will be equal to Q. Q is right here actually, right? V1, A1 or V2, A2. So that's 1 actually, meter cube per second. Density is 1,000, given to me. V2 is, I find it, 0 0.5, and sine of minus 60, right? That's pretty much what I have. So let's let's take a look one more step. So Fy, once I plug this into my calculator, I will see that the answer will be minus 6,280 newtons. Okay? So if I go up over here, I know that this is out and this is out. But what is going on in there? Is, is it going up or down? Reference manual states that this is the force exerted by the bend on the fluid. Okay? For your information, I don't want to make this like a lecture video, but this is the same thing as the force required to hold this in place. All right? In the FE, FE exam, if they ask you what is the force that the fluid exerts on the pipe, then it will be plus 6,280. All right? Basically, when you plug numbers to this equation, the number that you're going to get will be the force required to hold the elbow in place. All right? And I would like to note something um, that kind of makes sense logically as well. Think about it. If there's like a flow pushing this way, well, it's almost like a spacecraft, right? Well, not really, but you follow where I'm going, I guess. So this goes this way, right? So it's, it's going to go up. So I need to push it down to hold it. Otherwise, it's going to think of this as a pressure, pressure washer nozzle, right? This end is an example. So what happens is it's just, you know, you need to hold it. Then basically this is the answer I am asking you to find. The B is the answer. Thank you for watching this video.